Hey YouTube, um, I installed Photoshop 6 yesterday on Ubuntu 16.04 um, and I had an observation about the difference between how the healing brush works that I thought was interesting. It was interesting to me. So I'm going to ramble a little bit about the difference between that. Um, if you want to hear my rambles and somewhat of a rant about Ubuntu 17.10 and GNOME, then stay tuned for the until the end of this, because um, that was, oh, that was something else. So I'm just I was just kind of interested. Here's the here's the deal. As a, as a photographer and as a Linux person, I watch a lot of videos about frequency separation in Photoshop and how it's all done. And I noticed today the frequency separation. Somebody was doing a frequency separation based on curved. A layer with a curve added which I don't think we can do again and the whole frequency separation thing kind of I'm kind of I'm kind of torn on it like I don't want to spend half an half an hour on this image in Photoshop um, because the way I work it coming out of let's see coming out of dark table where is that image is that it so coming out of dark table I've already I've I've kind of used the equalizer to do some dodge and burn like emphasis. And I mean, I'm just, I, I do a lot of work in Darktable to make something come out in a way that I'm, I'm pretty much, all I really want to do is get rid of light stands and messes in the floor and do some, do some skin touch up. So it comes out of Darktable, then goes into Portrait, Portrait Pro for a really light, a really light treatment um, and comes out of that looking something like this, which is almost ready for prime time. I mean, it's you can use Portrait Pro to just make somebody look like plastic, but this is still very real. But we have these tiny little blemishes that I want to I want to clear up. So here's the difference. That's a quick observation. It's kind of interesting how the heel brushes work differently in GIMP. You're choosing a source, a bit like the clone brush. So you're choosing something similar to the area that you want to fix. And the algorithm is taking your source and kind of find, I guess it's taking what is different from the source, like there, it's taking what is different from the source and removing the difference. So it's a little bit like a it's a little bit like clone brush, but it's smarter, um, and I find it super powerful, like crazy, crazy fast. And I've got shift scroll. Do you know how to do that? That's like I don't know why it's not like that already, but I'd shoot myself if it wasn't like that. Input controllers, main mouse wheel, on this scroll up shift, add that tool paint brush size, increase skip. And on the shift down, tool paint brush size decrease skip. And that allows you to just kind of do a group, 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 shift key with the left hand and scroll. So this is super fast um, and super granular. I mean, I don't feel as if I'm losing skin texture here. I feel like that's it's doing exactly what I wanted to do. And very, very quickly, I'm ending up with where I want this to be, which is still like full texture of skin and per real person. Um, but just without these tiny little blemishes, which everybody has more than this. So, I mean, that's getting towards where I would call that final. Um, so Photoshop, Photoshop six. Uh, notice the color casting difference. It must have a different color. What's it? So that's something I would have to work out because I feel like this is what I'm used to, and this is greeny. So, okay. So let's do the same thing over here. Completely different. So the healing brush is of a certain size and you put it on a blemish and it makes it go away ish 
Um, and I'm finding best is kind of a little bit off the hardness size. Actually, big bigger size has to has to be bigger than the blemish, obviously. So what it's doing is instead of GIMP, which is taking an area that is good and extrapolating from that the goodness and comparing it to the to a good area with a blemish and taking up the blemish. Over here, I guess what it's doing is going from the edges into the middle and removing what seems to be the different thing in the middle. Um, but it's hard. So yeah, like I'm probably not doing this very well, obviously. I mean, my point of this video isn't so much that whether GIMP is bad. Yeah, that's bad. My, the point of this video, oops, isn't to say GIMP is better or GIMP is worse. My point is to anybody who's a Linux user um, is saying, you know what, we've got a pretty darn good tool here with GIMP. Um, and f I was expecting to get into Photoshop and just being so excited about all the amazing things that it could do that I wasn't used to. And I'm actually a little bit underwhelmed. And that's good because it's not a good idea for me to get hooked and addicted to a product that is no longer supported and is a nightmare to install. So it's not a bad thing. But I actually feel like I'm working harder here. I mean, I'd end up with a, I'd end up with a great result, but no, that looks bad. So. Um, I'm wondering that's what if is that why frequency separation is so common with with Photoshop users because the healing tool isn't as isn't as awesome I don't know I don't know but yeah I'm interested in your thoughts if you use both of these tools what are your thoughts on one what am I doing wrong here because I yeah, like I feel that I've just created a white circle there. Maybe I need a softer brush edge. They're, they're both fine. But I love my gimp. I love my gimp. Um, and in terms of processing, that's kind of where I go. Um, <clears throat> I'm not looking for utter, utter utter perfection I'm looking for real I'm looking for texture I'm... yeah so there you go uh, thoughts on my inadequacies with Photoshop and how I'm doing that um, really interested to hear from anybody who regularly uses both and what they really when they're in GIMP what they really miss uh, and interested in anybody saying what they love about GIMP. Um, so that's the end of that conversation. I'll talk a little bit about Ubuntu 17.10. So I've been using an SSD drive for a long time as, as my OS, 128 megabyte, gigabyte uh, SSD drive. I had my OS on it and my home folder on it, but pretty much nothing else. It didn't have, have room for anything else. It was all symlinked up to a big old 7200 RPM drive. Um, and I suddenly realized with the price of a decent 150 bucks for a decent half terabyte SSD drive, it would be really cool to have my OS and my current working, my current working files, my current, my current photo files that I'm working on projects pretty much should fit together on that half terabyte drive. So I installed that, um, and instead of cloning over the the partitions I thought it's been like two or three years two two years for sure since I did a complete reinstall so why not it only takes 10 minutes so I also thought hey why not use 1710 um, and it drove me bonkers some of the things some of the absolute deal killers for me were let's see let's just do the pictures um The open that open with dialogue was not there. 
that was replaced with open with application which could then bring up any of those things which like no 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 come on this is like click 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 oops open with something boom i mean i need that as part of my routine the second deal killer was um with wayland drag and drop not supported from port from uh shotwell and i use shotwell all the time to just drag you know um this is a copy of all my jpegs so i will just drag something from there to somewhere here to do something else with it you can't you can't drag from here to open file dialogues but you can drag from nautilus um so that was a massive deal killer because that's in terms of posting stuff to the web and guru shots and things that's i do that all the time um that was a fun shoot fun shoot dragging the shutter and a really wide angle lens close up with a really small pool of of flash on the camera um it worked out really well what was i talking about oh yeah so with wayland that drag and drop doesn't work now you can launch gnome on xorg on 1710 but that that was just falling over it was just flaky and both of them were doing full system full freezes about 10 minutes into a youtube video like i i couldn't believe it i've been using ubuntu since 2004 2005 um and it was driving me nuts and i like gnome i love the gnome extensions the way they were installed um i really missed oh why is that not working because i haven't done it yet i love that why is that not this is an absolute necessity for me maybe just because i'm old and my eyes are getting getting a bit bad but that i cannot live without that and that functionality was not available i could not find a way to do that there's an accessibility zoom but it's nothing like the same so i was really missing that um i tried oh it's a crash now that's interesting Um, I tried then to install Unity on 17.10, totally flaky. And that left click open with hadn't returned, but everything was just flaky. It was just, it was just flaky. So 24 hours into fighting with 17.10, trying Gnome on Wayland, Gnome on XOR, org, um, and Unity, I just scrapped the whole damn thing and installed 1610 um so six no, 4 long-term support so that's supported until 2021 which is this machine will probably not make it to 2021 um i'm, I'm using the nvidia proprietary driver and it's super slick it's super fast um and yeah i'm happy with everything about it so that was that was a saturday ra it's not saturday that was a friday ramble um so i think the takeaways are huh photo photoshop 6 actually installs pretty easily it's not not crazy hard um there's some videos out there how to do it on ubuntu works really well but if you're like me and you're a Linux user and you're wondering if you really need to, if you really need Adobe tools, I don't think so. I really don't think so. Not with Darktable, which is an amazing Lightroom alternative, and not with GIMP, which is this cra which is crazy. And this is this is old. This is two eight. I think.
Yeah, so this is stat, this is Ubuntu repo version. Um, anyway, that was a complete and utter ramble. If you are still here, God bless you. Have a good day.